Back your men up right now. The last 20 years, 25 years and stuff has really been uh, a, a fantastic time to be a dinosaur paleontologist. That there's excavations that have started all over the planet in a lot of areas that have never been excavated in. We also have technologies that we couldn't even think about back 25, 30 years ago to be able to apply to some of these problems. So we really have learned a lot. Everything from what color some of them were to that most of them had feathers to things about that their reproductive biology, their nesting, how they laid eggs, and all that kind of thing. So we've learned more in the last 30 years than we had in the entire history of dinosaur science before that. I mean, we have powerful satellite imagery to be able to pick out good places to go look for stuff. On the other side of it, in the lab, I mean, it's everything that's affected all of our lives. We have really fast computers now to be able to do mathematical problems that we could never do before. Uh, we also have a variety of imaging techniques like very high resolution CAT scans, uh, synchrotron radiation, things like that, so that we can really uh, look at things in a totally new way that in order to look at those things before, we would have had to destroy the fossils. When you look for dinosaurs, one of the big things that uh, you look for is you have to find rocks of a particular kind in a particular age. So that the non-bird dinosaurs became extinct about 100, about, about 65 million years ago. They first appeared about uh, 235 million years ago. So you have to find rocks that are within that window of time. You also have to find rocks which are of a particular type that preserve fossils, because not all rocks preserve fossils. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, a lot of it is hard going because it's all covered by forest and jungle and everything. So it's that you're limited by the amount of exposed rocks, even if those rocks are there. The reason that African fossils are important is because is that most of what we know throughout the typical Mesozoic era, the traditional dinosaurs, comes from northern continents, from Asia, North America, and Europe. So things that, uh, we look at how different that the faunas of the southern latitudes are today compared to the north. It just gives us a very much more complete and a very different picture of what was going on. And there's two parts of that. There's like you know, I have one life as kind of a laboratory person sitting in front of computers and doing experiments and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's the other side of it uh, of excavation season, which is about to progress t tonight. <laughs> uh, but uh, so the stuff in the lab, the big things have been understanding growth in dinosaurs. Uh, some of the new stuff that we've been doing now of looking at egg color and body color. As far as the excavation side of it, uh, you know, this will be my uh, 29th straight year uh, uh, working in the Gobi Desert, Mongolia. So we'll be out there for most of July and most of August. And we found some remarkable things there. I mean, we found uh, the dinosaurs sitting on top of their nests, brooding their eggs. We found 15 or 20 new dinosaur species. So we've really, really, really found some tremendously great stuff there. Uh, then, you know, we also excavate in, in China, in uh, the Alishan and Takamakan deserts. And we found some new tyrannosaurs there, which has been really, really great. This week I'm off to the Carpathian Mountains in uh, north, northeastern Romania, where we found uh, just a variety of very strange and unusual dinosaurs. Because if you think about really unusual animals today, a lot of them live on islands like Madagascar and that kind of thing, Komodo dragons and that stuff. Well, this area we excavate in, in uh, Transylvania, was an island when these animals were alive. So there's just lots of weirdo stuff, including the largest pterosaurs, flying reptiles to ever live, you know, some of which probably had 50, 60 foot wingspans. Depends on where you are. Uh, in Romania, it's uh, pretty easy. I mean, it's basically we stay in this beautiful house and we, it's kind of like adult summer camp. I mean, one day we'll be rappelling off cliffs looking for bones in the cliffs. The next day we'll be kayaking down rivers looking for bones in the road cuts. And then we, after work each day, we can go have a couple of beers and go back to our house and have a great dinner and stuff. Uh, places like uh, Mongolia is a whole different game. I mean, when we leave Ulaanbaatar, 
we have to have basically everything we're going to need for the entire summer packed in the trucks except for uh, fuel and water. Well, sometimes we have to have fuel because we can get water at a couple of old wells in the desert, but, but all of our food, all of our excavation equipment, supplies, and everything else. So, so we you know, set up a base camp and we kind of live there for the summer.